what do you think like the biggest like the the main lies about uh 9-11 that are kind of being purported are because I, I feel like there's just there's new ones coming up like i just did you see that doc, new documentary that just came out a couple days ago the um from that guy graham mcqueen do you know who he is and no, again i don't know you might be like this guy from, like, one of the charlatans i don't know him but probably he is it, <laughs> it started off with because this they're just grifting it started off the worst were alex jones and lose change yeah. Who were, you know, airplane deniers saying a missiles hit buildings and stuff, denied hijackers or said they're still alive and pods and missing gold and all this bullshit. Then Richard Gage watches Loose Change, uses slides from Loose Change in his lectures and stuff, and then denies that he got it from Loose Change, but he basically rehashed Loose Change and he titled an organization AE nine eleven, but it's not actually architects and engineers. He just went around to anybody, browbeating them, and and did a little questionnaire. And like anybody that said yes to, well, do you support an in- independent investigation? And most people are like, sure. He's like, okay, you, then you agree with us. <laughs> like, yeah. no, no, they don't agree with you. And he's right. a missile tar. He's exactly the same as loose change, except two of the guys of the three that did that one like reneged and recanted and left the yeah, Burmese is still out there selling yeah tickets. and i've had Burmese actually on the show before he, he's come on before yeah, he's, so. he's literally retarded and then <laughs> and the other one's a heroin addict and stuff that those kids are so fucking stupid and then uh and it's listen it's okay to believe something if someone lied to you and go oh wow you know yeah i don't think a plane could fit in an eight feet 18 foot hole or whatever yeah obviously but your premise is wrong because the hole's ninety feet across. The eighteen foot hole is so that because I've been because that was like the, the obviously that you're talking about the plane that crashed into the Pentagon, right? Some people say there was yeah. no plane, but some people oh, yeah, say that, more, some well, people say there's no plane. Some people like, say that there was a missile. Explain what happened to the plane? It's like, well, everyone saw a plane go to the Pentagon. No one saw it fly away. Yeah, and lots of people saw saw it or heard it or saw the right immediate aftermath. And there's pieces of the plane still in the building and the people on the plane are in the building. <laughs> like All the evidence matches the plane. They'll take a picture of the exit hole and act like that's the entrance hole. Or they'll take select pictures where there's water spraying underneath the bottom and they only show the hole in the second floor and act like, oh, it all had to go in there. Yeah, because I mean, there's a lot of like anecdotal, like not even, I I guess there still would be, you know, theories because a lot of people are like, uh, there'll be some guy who says, you know, I've, there's no, nothing from the engine. Like, where's the engine? And then they go, because of that reason, therefore it could not have been a plane. What do you say about it? These people, it's like ad hoc hypotheses that you get from religious nuts. Yeah. It's like, well, they just keep making excuses indefinitely because they don't want to let it go. Mm-hmm. The Earth wasn't made in six days. Now you can stretch that to be a metaphor. And well, well, a day really means millions of years. Blah, blah, blah. Like, well, if you keep rationalizing at that point, it's unrecognizable from what it actually says. And it's a plane. And some people go, well, the landing gear and all that. Maybe it was a global hawk or a drone or. Blah, 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 blah. No, it's the DNA from the passengers is just sitting at Walter Reed. They identified all the bodies. They had to get dental records and stuff in some cases, but they got everybody except for the baby. They had their DNA, including the hijackers. You have the air phone calls. You have debris of Flight 77, including the black box, all in the building. You do have a busted up engine, turbine. Because um, I know there's like the tires. highway or whatever, like is all the yeah. tower, the lights are knocked over, right? Every, well, the light poles are designed to be knocked over. But I'm saying that's something why, had to knock them want. over though, right? Yeah, a plane. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. A that, plane doesn't even have to hit a light pole to knock it down. If you hit a light pole from the top, even the wind from something going 400 miles an hour could probably do that. They blow over in regular storms sometimes. Right. Because and they're designed that, to give way so you don't impale a car on one of them. Right, right. And do you think like the reason why the Pentagon just doesn't release a, a non-shitty like shitty video is because they're just like, why? What do we care? Like, why do we have we don't to? have one. Why, why is there no video they, of it? Because the cameras in the Pentagon are in the Pentagon, and the cameras that are outside the Pentagon aren't filming some random wall. They're looking at the entranceway, people going in and out of the door. They don't have a camera set up somewhere on the lawn 
pointed at a random wall behind the heliport of just bricks all day long waiting for a plane to arrive. Right. And the cameras they do have aren't designed to catch something zipping across the parking lot at four or 500 miles an hour. They're there to design people walking in and out of the building. And what about that the, one this video? This whole that... crap, well, there are 85 cameras. The FBI went around and took them all. No, they didn't. That is based on an affidavit. That number comes from an affidavit about 9-11 in general, and almost the entirety of all those cameras were talking about the film of the planes hitting in New York. The right. little five frames they have at the Pentagon is all that exists, but even that five frames, that's a hell of a long missile. It's as long as an airplane, but it doesn't rest on that. It's like it's not like, oh, there's no evidence. No other evidence, and we have to guess based on these five frames. There's a fucking plane in the building with a plane-sized hole full of passengers that were on the plane. Yeah. And there's no motive for this switcheroo shit. Like, I hate wasting my time on this stuff. Like, this is why we lose. I'm talking about who did 9-11 and why, going back to the Saudi and Israeli governments and stuff, and you faggots are talking about thermite <laughs> and missiles and stuff. It's like, this is why... This is why we're fucked. Well, I'm, I'm not saying I believe, believe this stuff. I, I'm just saying these are what a lot of you, people do like, believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, fuck um, them, dude. They're not even... Those people will never amount to anything. Like, if you get suckered into that, after someone shows... I understand getting lied to, but once someone shows you, oh, look, here's a giant fucking hole. Oh, you say there's no debris? Here's a bunch of photos of debris. And you know what they do? They start going, maybe they planted those there to make it look like a plane. Right, and, and then like, you go, oh, this yeah, is just... Yeah, and you're just getting... You do, it's like... You are so egotistical that you can't admit being wrong and change your mind when you get better evidence. Yeah. Okay. So that's what it is. Your main after, you know, you've probably done more research on this than maybe any person on earth, safe to say. Possibly. That's yeah, not even. It's, it's, it's like. I'm in up, the top 10 for sure. For sure. Right. So you're, you're at the point where, um, you know, obviously, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's the, it's the Saudi and Israeli governments who are behind. For and the, the U.S. Part. And the, the U.S. The U.S., Saudi Arabia, and Israel have had an intelligence sharing faction for a long time. They did Iran Contra together. They financed ISIS together in Syria after the war. The Saudis and uh, the U.S. financed diaspora in Afghanistan, which is where bin Laden gets his start creating a splinter group of the Mujahideen called Al Qaeda. I mean, that Al-Qaeda has not been separate from intelligence agencies from its inception. It's yeah. not like, oh, before 9-11, they worked with the U.S., and after 9-11, ISIS and Al-Qaeda are working with the U.S. in Iraq and Syria. But during 9-11, they just had a break and that did that all by themselves. <laughs> like, no. And this is what pisses me off about the Pentagon stuff, besides sounding retarded and turning 9-11 into a tar baby. One of the really damning pieces of evidence is Dick Cheney refused to shoot down Flight 77. And you have Norman Mineta's famous testimony. He's the Transportation Secretary. Yeah, yeah, someone just was young man, called 30 miles it. out, 20 miles out, blah, blah, blah. 30 miles out from what? And what are you you're refusing to shoot down the plane? Hanji Hanjor came in at too high an altitude, so he had to go and do a big loop around Virginia. So he's not, like, he went, and this isn't some Top Gun maneuver. He just turned around. And then came back again at a lower altitude and hit it. So they had two chances to shoot down that plane. Yeah. And Cheney refused. And because the hijacker messed up and had to do a do-over, oops, I'm too high, let me come in again, there was really hard to explain why they're not shooting down this plane. What do they do? Well, they, they created a disinformation campaign about, oh, you know what, it kind of looks like a missile. Blah, blah, blah. They fed this information to retarded people and then they use their go-to guy alex jones because alex has no filter and they know this guy will reach millions of people he's very animated and high energy and stuff all we got to do is whisper in his ear and he'll he'll run the touchdown for us and alex did he had loose change on his show and every other dumbass and he never had anyone serious i was like is he working for them or is he really just a useful idiot doesn't matter because the result's the same. But when, when they started talking about missile stuff, the Cheney thing disappeared. And I thought, it's weird that you guys will talk about the Mineta testimony and in the same breath say there's no plane. Like, what's yeah. 30 miles out? He's not right. talking about Flight 93 because in the... <laughs> fucking, I hate this. <laughs> they, in the 9-11 commission, which they like, oh, that's a joke. No. In the testimony from Mineta, 
to Lee Hamilton. He goes, are you talking about Flight 77? Yes, the one that hit the Pentagon. Real crystal clear. Right. Our government refused to shoot down a hijacked plane by Al-Qaeda. And did they know, like, and is your theory that because they knew that that's, then they just, they wanted it for the pretext of all the stuff that they eventually did? Was it? You know what's sick is hitting New York should have been enough. Right. You would think so. So, well, yeah, unless unless there was some stuff in the Pentagon he wanted to disappear. Who knows? But Cheney knew the plan, and he didn't know whether the towers were going to fall or not, or just got hit. But hitting the military center is going to piss all them off and all their families off, and they're going to be ready to new Pearl Harbor somebody. And, they, right. you know, they wanted a war in Iraq. Yeah. and, and Because was... they blamed it on Iraq. They said... Saddam Hussein was working with Al-Qaeda. They said that he gave, that his uh, senior Iraqi officials gave anthrax to Mohammed Atta. It wasn't true. And you know the origin of that was the Israelis. Yeah. <laughs> and then the note said, death to Israel, death to America. Like, oh, right, really? yeah, the anthrax thing. Yeah, I was just watching mm-hmm. in the, and they they got a guy for it, didn't they? Some guy who worked in the, the American military who then killed himself? They, yeah, they first they chased around this guy named Stephen Hatfield, who won a six million pound settlement, British Sterling. And then they blamed everything on this dude, Bruce Ivins. Bruce Ivins. And then he suicide, he, yeah, he kills himself, allegedly all by himself. And never had a trial or anything. But after he died, they proved he didn't have the equipment or skill set to do the gain of function research on anthrax. Because the anthrax wasn't just from a dead cow or something. They had anthrax spores that had catalysts and accelerants added to it to make it more deadly, called weapons-grade anthrax. And Ivans didn't have the means. But what I find interesting is like, huh, you know, instead of comparing it to Pearl Harbor, why don't we compare it to an event where, I don't know, the World Trade Center got hit with a truck bomb? Right. Huh, in 93. And what also happened back then? No, somebody stole 23 vials of gain-of-function anthrax out of the lab in Fort Detrick. How about that? Named Philip Zach. And they didn't even question this guy. And here's another kicker. Somebody, when they screwed up, because they sent a letter to the FBI blaming the anthrax attack on this guy, Ayad Assad, this Egyptian guy who didn't even work there anymore. Yeah. The problem is, they're like, what anthrax? Because none of the mail had been opened yet. Because all the planes got grounded on 9-11, 9-12. And so the mail was all, you know, just stuck in central places. Yeah, yeah, they had to sort it out. And so they don't open any anthrax. Stevens gets killed. And they didn't open the anthrax yet. But this guy, who had been fired from the lab, who had been caught on camera stealing anthrax from the lab where he used to work, this is a preemptively writes a letter. His name is Philip Zach. He preemptively wrote a letter trying to blame everything on this guy, Ayad Assad, who he had been harass- harassing at that lab in the past. That's why he got fired. He put a blow-up camel in his locker with a dildo. It was just regular, you know, Zionist, racist guy. He had a whole clique called the Camel Club to harass and pick on this Egyptian scientist. They were trying to kick him out because the other six, they would have had an Israeli monopoly on the, the second to be able to do whatever they want because he and was this there. Is, sorry, what year is this? This is back in 92, 93, 92, December, 93, okay. January. And in that then uh, this is r- a month before World Trade Center 3 was bombed by the Ryder truck. And it seemed like back then it, the plan was Knock one tower to the other with a truck bomb and followed up with a anthrax attack. But because they botched it, the tower didn't fall. Trucks parked in the wrong place. The idiot went back and tried to get a refund. And, you know, they traced the rental address back to this woman named Josie Hadass, who was a Mossad agent. Like, why are you staying in the apartment (laughs) of a foreign intelligence officer? Isn't that odd? And then somebody steals anthrax. But the thing is, during 9-11... Anthrax is mailed on September 18th, but it wasn't open for a while. But uh, but Philip Zach's letter trying to blame Assad was open before the anthrax is open. So he's trying to blame him for something that no one could know about. What anthrax? Then they open anthrax. Oh, this anthrax. So they go and they ask Assad, who wrote this letter? And but given all the details about his life and stuff, the person knew it had to be Philip Zach. He's like yeah. this guy. 
Did the FBI then go and question him? Nope. You know what they did? They went to Ames, Iowa and destroyed anthrax samples. What are you doing? And at this time, John McCain goes on Letterman's show and says, you know, there's some evidence that some of this anthrax may have come from Iraq. And that's when they start lying about Atta went to Prague and all this crap. And knew it wasn't true because they never questioned the prime suspect who could royally fucked up by not waiting until the anthrax was open before he sends his letter trying to pen it on somebody. Right. So that's kind of in your, that seems to be the smoking gun because obviously how could you write a letter without, without obviously. Yeah. And it, it seems like they weren't coordinated because he knew, he like knew it was happening. He's the one that steals it and everything. But he maybe didn't get the memo that like, no, 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 we're not interested in this guy, your little personal vendetta. We're blaming this on Saddam because we want a war in Iraq. And that's yeah. what they went with, James Woolsey's story and all that. But the FBI just ignores this and just ignores like, why isn't he in jail anyway for being on film, going breaking in the lab where he used to work, doing illegal research, and, and then there's missing vials of anthrax. And, he and ought to be in prison for that. And his little cohort, Dr. Ripley, ought to be in jail, too. She's the one that unlocks the door and does the key card stuff for him. Right. Like, they should both be in prison for that anyway. Nope. Why? And it's because it's blackmail. I mean, Israel is so embedded into our defense industry, especially in biowarfare, that it's like you got to leave them there or else. They have so many moles. Like, okay, we'll share all of this with Russia and whatever. Like, that's actually what it they... is, where they're just like, they're, they know that they should do something, but it, it wasn't more of they like a larger government conspiracy. They, they can't do anything. And and also, the blackmail rings are deep. I mean, Clinton was an Epstein client. Right. It, it just goes so deep. 